this this next story, Mike. It's it's uh, how do, how would you describe it? It's it's a story of a great American. Yeah, it, yeah. it is, Terry. This is the last one we got on the on the menu for tonight, and uh, kind of purposely saved this one for last. Uh, you and I talked about this story a little bit off the air. This guy, to me, uh, this is a true American. This is a great American, I, w- I would. Now, along with the United States Marine Color Guard to sing the national anthem, famed recording artist Marvin Gaye. This guy, he, 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 this guy, uh, go ahead and read the story, Mike. Uh, this is a story, Terry, concerning uh, Mr. Eugene Allen. Uh, the White House butler uh, for eight presidents who died this past week at age 90. Eight Uh, different presidents this guy served. Eight presidents this guy served under. Uh, And this is uh, comes from uh, comes from us, excuse me, courtesy of the Washington Post. This is from the Friday, April 2nd edition. Eugene Allen, who endured a harsh and segregated upbringing in his native Virginia and went on to work for eight presidents as a White House butler, died March 31st of renal failure at Washington Adventist Hospital in Tacoma Park. He was 90 years old. Mr. Allen and his wife, Helene, Helene, excuse me, were profiled in a Washington Post story in 2008 that explored history of blacks in the White House. The couple were excited about the possibility of Barack Obama's historic election and their opportunity to vote for him. Helene, however, died on the eve of the election, and Mr. Allen went to vote alone. The couple had been married for 65 years. Afterward, Mr. Allen, who had been living quietly in a simple house off Georgia Avenue, northwest in the district, experienced a fame that he had only witnessed beforehand. He received a VIP invitation to President Obama's swearing in, where a Marine guard escorted him to his seat. Eyes watering, he watched the first black man take the oath of office of the presidency. Mr. Allen was besieged with invitations to appear on national TV shows. There were book offers and dozens of speaking requests, all of which he declined. He also received hundreds of letters, some from as far away as Switzerland, from people amazed at the arc of his life and imploring him to hold on while thanking him for his service to the nation. People in his neighborhood would stop him and explain to their children the outlines of his life. He liked to think of himself as just a humble butler, his only child, Charles, said on Thursday. Aside from his son, Mr. Allen is survived by five grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Mr. Allen was born on July 14, 1919, in Scottsdale, Virginia, or excuse me, rather, Scottsville, Virginia, Terry. He worked as a waiter at the Homestead Resort in Hot Springs, Virginia, and later at a country club in Washington. In 1952, he heard of a job opening at the White House and was hired as a pantry man, washing dishes, stocking cabinets, and shining silverware for $2,400 a year. He became Mater D, the most prestigious position among White House butlers, under Ronald Reagan. During Mr. Allen's 34 years at the White House, some of the decisions that presidents made within earshot of him came to have a direct bearing on his life and that of black America. Mr. Allen was in the White House when Dwight D. Eisenhower dealt with the Little Rock desegregation crisis. Eisenhower once asked him about the cancellation of Nat King Cole's TV show, which the president enjoyed. Mr. Allen told him that the show had difficulty attracting advertisers who were worried about white Southern audiences boycotting their products. When John F. Kennedy was assassinated, Mr. Allen was invited to the funeral. He declined for the most generous of reasons. Somebody had to be at the White House to serve everyone after they came home from the funeral. He told the Post, uh, when First Lady Jackie Kennedy returned to the White House afterwards, she gave him one of the president's ties. Mr. Allen had it framed. Mr. Allen served entertainers including Sammy Davis Jr., Duke Ellington, Pearl Bailey, and Elvis Presley. He flew aboard Air Force One. He sipped root beer at Camp David with Jimmy Carter and visited Eisenhower in Gettysburg after he left the White House. There were always Christmas and birthday cards from the families of the presidents he had served. 
He looked up one evening in the White House kitchen to see a lone figure standing in the doorway. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who had insisted on meeting the butlers and maids. Mr. Allen smiled when King complimented him on the cut of his tuxedo. <clears throat> Mr. Allen served cups and cups of milk and scotch to help Lyndon B. Johnson settle his stomach when protesters were yelling outside the White House gates during the Vietnam War. He longed to say something to Johnson about his son, who was serving in Vietnam at the time, but dared not, save for acknowledging that his son was alive when Johnson asked about him. Pause for our page to load there, Terry. I'll get the first paragraph, buddy. It, our, comput it, it, our computer's running a little slow today. Here. It, it pained Mr. Allen to hear vulgar words, sometimes racially charged, flowing from Johnson's mouth. And it delighted him when Johnson signed the historic Civil Rights Bill of 1964 and 65. Sometimes Mr. Allen's own life seemed to stop beneath the chandeliered light. First Lady Nancy Reagan came looking for him one afternoon, and Mr. Allen wondered whether or not he or a member of his staff had done something wrong. She assured him that he had not, but also told him that his services would not be needed at the upcoming state dinner for German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. Mr. Allen tensed, wondering why. She said, you and Helena are, going to com are, going, are coming to the state dinner as guests of President Reagan and myself. He recounted the, in the Post interview, Mr. Allen thought he was the first butler to receive an invitation to state dinner. He and Helena, she was a beautiful dresser, looked resplendent that night. The butlers on duty seemed to pay special attention to the couple as they poured champagne for the guest. Champagne that Mr. Allen himself had stacked in the kitchen. Mr. Allen was mindful of the flowering... Mindful that with the flowering of the black power movement, many young people questioned why he would keep working as a butler with its connotations of subservience. But the job gave him great pride, and he endured the slights with a dignified posture. He was such a professional in everything he did, said Wilson German, 81, whom Mr. Allen hired to work at the White House in the early 1960s. When my wife Gladys died in 1966, he told me not to worry about a thing. I didn't think I could get through that period, and he just took me by the hand. I'll never forget it. Mr. Allen retired in 1986 after having been promoted to maitre d' not five years earlier. He possessed a dazzling array of framed photographs with all the presidents he had served, in addition to gifts and mementos from each of them. The last item to be framed and placed at Eugene Allen's basement was a wall, or uh, the last item to be framed and placed on Eugene Allen's basement wall was a condolence letter from George W. and Laura Bush. It arrived from the White House just after the death of his beloved wife, Helena. Excellent story. What a great American, huh? We, we, yep. all, we all hear about those who serve, and we all think about, you know, soldiers and sailors and police officers and and it's people like this who we don't think about who deserve all the recognition that they get exactly um think about it mike you're in the white house lyndon johnson asks you how your son is your son is serving in vietnam and you're in a position where you can talk to the president and you don't say please bring my boy home yeah it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't. You know? I couldn't do. It. I got. I got tears in my eyes just you know reading the story the first time. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. I. I have to be honest. It gave me chills the first time I read it. Exactly. What. What an amazing American, Mister Eugene Allen, um, died this past week uh, at age ninety. Wow. What. What a life. Um, you know, it would be interesting if maybe uh, some sort of book could be written. I mean, could you imagine the stories? Wow. Well, the one, the one paragraph about how many speaking engagements and interviews and and book offers did he turn down? Because that's that's what a servant does. He keeps that private. That's between he and the people Ex he's taking care of. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's just it's amazing. I, I mean, man, the the stories that man could tell. I mean, obviously not now, but wow. 
he, he, you know. he's, he's the epitome of a great American. Right. I, I agree. Truly a great American. Mr. Eugene Allen.